Welcome to Kicking Kickstarter. I'm here with Nick Forshaw to talk about the Kickstarter project Jeb's Jobs the Movie. Uh, Jeb goes back about nine years now. Um, I invented him for a little show real piece uh, uh, way back when, but uh, I used him for a, uh, an animation competition that the BBC were running, um, which is where I made the first Jeb's Jobs episode, which was an entry for that, which um, got absolutely nowhere. Uh, in the competition, but I put it online before the competition actually opened, and by the time the competition had closed, um, it, it had a million hits. Um, so I, I spoke to the BBC at the time and I said, okay, so I didn't win the competition, but this is obviously you know, raising some interest, I'll do something with it, and they went, no, sorry, not for us. So he's, he's been online ever since, basically, and this is all before YouTube started. Mm. Uh, I don't know if you remember this we think called Mycos Spiral Chart, which was, I guess, where a lot of the sort of the whole spiral culture started. It. Um, so he went on that, and it was mainly thanks to that that he got so much interest. Um, and it's only a, uh, a couple of years after that that YouTube kind of came to the fore and only went onto YouTube. And that's where it all kicked off for him properly. Was it on the YouTube? Did you end up with like more viewers and subscribers for? Jeb. Yeah, um, and to be honest, his, his heyday was probably pre YouTube um, because it was a time when you know there wasn't the, the wealth of content that, that there is now, and that the advantage back then was that people went to places like like on Spiral Chart and all the, sort of the major ISPs did their own versions of that. Um, so they actually sort of went looking for funny stuff to watch, whereas now with YouTube, because the British there, it's almost impossible to just sort of filter down to find the things that you like, unless people actually sort of actively send them to you. So, um, it was it was more effective pre YouTube, but obviously, now that YouTube's there, we, you know, you can monetize your videos and things, so it's, it's got its own advantages. But in terms of getting the audience figures, it's actually a, a bit of a disadvantage, I would say. So, uh, so, YouTube's quite good for um, monetizing it, but definitely not good for promotion and getting it out it's, there to a wider audience this you would think yeah i mean it's good if, if people latch onto you and, and share you and, and you get the subscribers there are mechanisms in place on youtube to, to you know sort of help you find an audience but it's it's like i say because there's so much on youtube the chances of people sort of stumbling across you by accident are, are, are fairly remote so you have to sort of actually actively promote what you're doing um, which I think is more time consuming. Yes, that it definitely is. And how did uh, how did Jeb himself? How did you think him up? Because he's a strange-looking <coughs> being, to put it simply. <laughs> yeah, there he is. He, he looks like he looks because it was a quick and easy thing to build. Because the original thing that I used him in was this showreel piece, and there were two characters in it, one of which was Ned. And Ned was the character that I was going to focus on and, and make most use of, and, and Jeb was sort of the sidekick. Um, but because Ned didn't do any speaking in the show, real thing that Jeb did when I came to do the uh, the BBC animation, um, because Ned, because Jeb had a, a, a lip sync ready, ready to go, I thought, well, I'll use him instead of Ned. Um, and it's probably you know for that I did because I don't think Ned would have been as popular as Jeb because Jeb just got a, a certain something about him. So. Mm. It's a, a bit of good luck, really. He's definitely a very quirky character. That <laughs> lend, lends himself to many faces and guises, isn't he? <laughs> For other. Yeah, that's the thing. He's kind, of, he's kind of a blank palette, so you can you know, do almost anything with him. The, the slight limitation is the voice. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's quite difficult to do uh, uh, anything too complicated with that voice, but in terms of his look, you, know, you can dress him up. You can, whatever you want to, I mean, like you say, so yeah, he's, he's quite flexible. Yeah, and how did your, how did the weekend animations come about? Was that, was the name something like stuck from when you were doing the animations before uh, Jeb came along or was it something you created afterwards? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a bit of a, a, a poor joke which when I was a, a kid making stupid movies with my mates. Um, uh, and we did as kids do, we, we give ourselves a, a, a name for our little weekend company that, that we were making these videos, so we call ourselves Weekend Productions. 
um, with the, the very strength of the weakness WDAK. Um, so yeah. when I started freelancing uh, as an animator, um, I thought, you know, it's a bit of an homage to the rubbish we used to do when we were kids. I'd, I'd use that, so I traded as weekend productions for a number of years. Um, but when I set up the YouTube channel, some of them had already got weekend animations as their channel name. That's something in America, I think. Um, so it was. Uh, so I had to do weekend animation. Uh, um, so it's a bit of a throwback to <laughs> the, mm. the late 1980s. <laughs> How did you get into the animation industry? Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, a bit of a security trick. I was a, uh, uh, a lighting cameraman for a number of years, then I um, ran a, a little film studio in London for a number of years. And there was a point which I can't quite identify, uh, which I thought, I don't want to be doing live action, I want to be doing animation. I, I was always obsessed by Pixar stuff dating right back to the, the very early days. Um, and Luxo Junior in particular was uh, uh, a bit of a, a turning point in my mind. Um, so uh, I was sort of got a bit fed up with doing the, the live action stuff. Um, I thought I'm going to try and do effectively what I'm doing now, which is working for myself um, as a 3D animator. Um, and it took about nine years to get there because at the time the, the technology was extremely expensive um, and I didn't have any of the skills, so I, I had to sort of learn um, in, in my spare time and I got a job as a, a, a graphic designer. And it was just good luck that the company I was working for decided to try and dip their toe into 3D animation, so I kind of leapt into that role. Um, and learnt on the job there. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was about a nine year process from deciding that I was definitely going to try and do it to actually being in a position where, you know, I could make a living doing it without sitting in somebody else's office doing the work for them. So you definitely uh, worked hard to uh, get where you wanted to be, which is a self employed animator. What yeah. other what products do you do um, to earn? money for the company and yourself? Uh, the majority of the stuff that I do is, is probably um, sort of corporate communications, business to business, marketing sort of stuff. Um, so it's, uh, it's things like virals, it's, um, if you look at my website there's a load of stuff on there. Uh, and, 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 uh, virals, uh, uh, conference presentations, it's mm. you know, that kind of sort of market mainly. Um, because that's those are the people that got the money. Um, so if you're going to get a budget, uh, if anyone is more likely to be a corporate than it is to be somebody in the entertainment field where things tend to be tighter. Um, but I also, uh, in the last few years, um, sort of doing a few TV commercials, um, and I've done a run of um, show graphics as well for um, for diversity and just did the Steps reunion tour last year and things like that. So it's a fairly broad market. Mm. Um, the, the mainstays in the, the corporate sector, definitely. And I take it um, Jeb is a nice release from the corporate area of what you do then? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's done me a lot of favours over the years because um, he's, he's the main reason that I managed to go freelance from the point of view that he drew attention to the work that I was doing um, because it got quite popular online. People were looking at the other things that I was doing and, and I started to get jobs in on the back of, you know, not necessarily Jet, but the, the stuff that I'd done alongside Jet. Um, uh, and the first sort of big independent contract I got was with Mattel doing um, things called sizzles of, uh, of new toy products. I did those for a number of years, and they were specifically because somebody had seen Jet uh, online and then looked at some of my other bits and bobs and said, oh, we like this guy, they gave me a ring, and, and I did those for about three or four years, and they were sizable contracts, and, and they gave me enough of a foundation to, to go freelance eventually. Um, so it was all down to Jet, really. And when did you decide to do a movie for Jeb to star in? Um, about six years ago. Um, uh, Jeb was having a, a quite a good, he, he goes and dips and troughs, Jeb, but depending on how much time I've got to do stuff with him. And he had a bit of a, 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 a zenith about six years ago, and I happened to be doing um, 
uh, got a lot of visual effects work on movies at the time. Um, so I spoke to a producer that I met and said, you know, would you be interested in, in helping get this rolling? Um, uh, and so I, I put together a script and he put together a budget and we looked at it and went, where are we going to get the money from? <laughs> at the time, this was obviously the days before crowdfunding was, uh, was I don't know, if it existed back then, certainly before it was, mm. it was as high profile as it is now. And it just stalled at that point. We thought there's no way we're going to raise two million quid going around um, distribution company uh, for a, an animation which doesn't have an obvious market um, so it sat on the shelf um, for a long time but Jeb's had another one of his resurgences over the last sort of six or nine months and then I dragged the script out and read it again and thought actually this could be really good if we could get to make it um, so I thought I'd have a punt at, at getting some crowdfunding behind it which, which isn't going well <laughs> And so that's why you decided to choose to uh, kickstart it, was to um, get the fans putting the money into the movie itself. And what, when they fund you, what tiers of rewards can they get back? Um, the, the basic one is, is a download of the finished movie before it gets released, um, which I think is, is fairly essential. I did look into doing a, a DVD as the, the base level. But the, the con involved in actually distributing a DVD properly internationally would, would you know, sort of take a, a third out of the entire budget. Um, so that wasn't very realistic. So the, the download is the, the basic reward of the finished movie, and then it increments upwards. So you get uh, the, the second tier reward is uh, the download of the movie plus uh, I'm remastering all of the old gem stuff as well. And the idea is also to make a sort of a, a behind the scenes documentary. Um, about uh, Jeb and Jeb's life, so that would be part of the second tier reward, and then we get into the, the actual sort of physical DVD release uh, above that, and it goes all the way up to um, uh, actually appearing as a character in the movie. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah. So they get quite some quite good tiers as they get up to. They either get the complete movie, the whole collection, and if they go for the top one, they even get to appear in it. Yeah, is, I thought that was a really nice idea. It was a, yeah. suggested to me by a, a, a friend of mine, but um, because it's animation, because you don't actually need to uh, put somebody in front of a camera or, or even be in the same country as them, it's entirely feasible to mm. uh, book some time in a recording studio anywhere in the world. So they can go in, you can direct it over the phone or over the internet, um, uh, and then use their face photographs of them to, to base a character on them, uh, therefore actually provide the voice and provide the face for one of the, the smaller characters in the movie. Mm-hmm. And once you've once you've done your Kickstarter project, how long would you hope that the movie itself would take to create? Um, I've always had it in my mind that if I did it the way I want to do it, which is basically where I'm doing almost everything on it, it would take up to two years. Is I think it could be done in 12 months. Realistically, it would probably be somewhere between the two, so about 18 months to get it right. Because mm. I mean, I've said before that the important thing is to is to do it well, not to do it quickly. Um, and it's a massive undertaking trying to do something like this single-handed. Uh, so I don't want to rush it. And what's the future for Jeb and yourself? Uh, pass. No idea. <laughs> 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 I've gone into this um, realistically because of the, the budget that we need to, to do it is, is fairly massive um, and Jeb to a lot of people I'm guessing who are you know, established Kickstarter contributors, he means nothing to them. Um, so I mean the reality is that we're you know, climbing quite a big hill to try and get um, funding through Kickstarter. The, 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 the plan B if it doesn't work like this, is to actually do a Jeb Jobs box set rather than a movie. Um, but if the movie does kick off, who knows, to be honest. Um, I, I, I'm not sort of expecting to, to go from doing Jeb's Jobs the movie to directing mm. Hollywood movies. <laughs> to be frank, I'm not entirely sure I'd want to use Jeb um, uh, enough momentum to keep doing more stuff and to concentrate on, on you know, sort of exploiting Jeb as far as he'll go, 
then that's that's the direction that'll be very interesting. Um, likewise, if uh, you know, if it put me in a position where I could do something a bit more serious, um, the, the key for me is to be as independent as possible. What I wouldn't want to do is to you know sell Jeb or sell an idea to, um, to 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 somebody else and lose control of it. I'd rather not do it than than not be involved because that's the fun for me is being involved in sort of aspect of production. Mm. And so to just to just be responsible for coming up with an idea or just to write it or just to you know do a voice for one of the characters whatever um, wouldn't be enough. And I, you know this is kind of why I don't work in the film industry proper because having dipped my toe in the water, if you you work in a very very narrow part of it, mm. and you're unless you're you know directing or producing, uh, and you you tend to be sort of rather detached from the rest of the product line. That doesn't really feel I like to be, you know, involved, if not in control of every single aspect of whatever I do. So, um, I think if if Jim's jobs and movie worked out, I would probably have been doing Jim's jobs and movie too, or you know, just carrying him on on YouTube, but with a higher profile and you know, uh, a bigger audience perhaps. And where can people go to find out more about yourself and Jeb as well? Um, the YouTube is, is the best place to go for Jeb at the moment, I think, because um, all, for, obviously all the movies are on there, but also the, the comments that people leave about Jeb, I think, make really quite interesting reading. And um, particularly if you look at the demographics of the audience, that's quite fascinating because it's a very, very wide demographic. The, the sort of teenagers who are uniquely enjoying Jeb, although there is a, a, a big teenage market, there's also um, the, the biggest market at the moment seems to be in North America of people between 35 and 55, which is quite surprising. Mm. Um, so, you know, it's just to sort of, for me anyway, the interest is, is um, you know, looking at who's looking at Jeb. Thank you very much, uh, Nick Forshaw, for talking to us about Jeb's Jobs the Meeting. Thank you very much.